the number one problem facing today's black entrepreneur is our addiction to labor as the primary mechanism by which we generate revenue in our business. Now, that is not to say that working hard is not a good thing. That's not to say that working hard doesn't have merit. But we work hard in so much as to perfect our knowledge. But once our knowledge has been perfected, it is incumbent upon us to monetize that which we know. And there has been a cataclysmic failure by the black entrepreneur to monetize our knowledge. Now somebody, anybody, everybody, ask me why. Because since the days of slavery, we have been rewarded for our labor. Since the days of slavery, we have been taught to believe that the thing that makes us valuable as a people, the thing that makes us valuable as a culture, the thing that makes us valuable as a race is our labor. Since the days of slavery, we have been punished for daring to know something. Since the days of slavery, we have been punished, we have been threatened, we have been killed for daring to know something, let alone having the audacity to share something. And what it has done is it has created a generation of black entrepreneurs who have overvalued our labor and undervalued our knowledge. Here's the thing that I want you to know. I want you to repeat after me. There's more money in what I know than what I do. See, it's one thing to say that. It's another thing entirely to believe that. See, here's what I know, is that as entrepreneurs, we are the can-do generation. We wanna do everything. And so every time something needs to get done, I'm raising my hand. Who's going to do the marketing? Me. Who's going to do the sales? Me. Who's going to do the servicing? Me. Who's going to do the accounting? Me. And here's what I want you to know, that the answer to who doesn't always have to be you. You're not Superman. You're not Superwoman. You can't leap tall buildings with a single bound. And at some point, you have to move beyond this belief that says that if you want something done right, you got to what? It's the biggest lie they ever told you. If you really want something done right, you got to put a process in place. If you really want something done right, you got to put a system in place. And in the absence of a process and in the absence of a system, what we've done is replaced it with I. And it's created an addiction to our own labor. If our titles were to match our actions, we would probably be more accurately referred to as black solopreneurs rather than black entrepreneurs. So I dare you today to change your thinking, that we got to change our focus. The first thing we got to do to ensure the rise of the black entrepreneur is we got to break the addiction to our own labor. The second thing we got to do is break other people's addiction to our own labor. Number three we got to stop linear thinking. And instead of linear thinking, we need to adopt circular thinking. After all, it is our heritage. And I believe that our linear thinking was brought about with this belief that we should start with the end in mind. And I believe that adopting that belief has caused us as entrepreneurs to become more linear in our thinking. It's caused us to adopt finite thinking. And so here's what happens, is that I see my resources as finite. I see the results that I produce in the lives of others as finite. I see the revenue that comes into my business as finite. I become a thinker, all I see is the limits as opposed to seeing the opportunities and the options in my business as limitless. 
See, when we start with the end in mind, here's what happens. Here's the client experience. Client comes into our business. Our belief as the business is that all we got to do is get them to the end. So the client comes into our business. They get started right here. They come through our process. And then we get them to the end. And when that client gets to the end, they're left with a simple dilemma. They're left with one big question. What's next? And so they go find the next business to work with. They go find the next product to buy. They go find the next service to invest in. And that's the client experience. And so at the end of the day, we walk the client right off the cliff with no next in store. But let's go back and let's, let's look at your experience. Client comes into your business. You get them started. After you get them started, you take them through your process. After they get through your process, they get all the way to the end. And when they get to the end of your process, you are left with the same question, you are left with the same dilemma that the client had. All you want to know is what's, what's next. And all that you do is you go look for your next client and you go look for your next customer. And what's happening is you're starting over and over and over again. And the problem with that is that it's very linear in nature. Here's the thing that I want you to know. Sometimes you don't need more clients. Sometimes you don't need more customers. Sometimes you need more clients and more customers that you already have spending more money with you. See, I wish that I could tell you that I came up with this train of thought all by myself, but one day I had an epiphany. And I was talking to my seven-year-old son. This, this is my son right here, and he's the, he's the love of my life. I mean, I call myself an entrepreneur, but I'm probably more accurately referred to as a familypreneur, as a dadpreneur. It's the reason why I do this. So anyway, we are having this discussion. We're watching this cartoon called The Roadrunner. Anybody ever seen The Roadrunner? Raise your hand if you've seen The Roadrunner. That's real cartoons. Roadrunner, Bugs Bunny. I don't know what they watch today on TV. I watch real cartoons. So while I was watching the real cartoons, he says to me, Daddy, why does the dumb coyote keep running off the cliff? And I said, oh, he probably just didn't see it, son. Uh-uh, Daddy, he ran off the cliff last time. <laughs> so I had to come up with this answer. And so I started watching the show, and I had a realization. Is that the reason why the roadrunner kept talking or getting the coyote to run off the cliff is because the coyote really was a linear thinker. And the real question is not what is a linear thinker. The real question is are you a linear thinker? See, here's the thing. If you ever watch any episode of The Roadrunner, here's what happens. There's the coyote. He's chasing the roadrunner. He's chasing the roadrunner. He's chasing the roadrunner. He's what? He's chasing the roadrunner. And eventually, the roadrunner just steps to the side. And the coyote just runs right past him, runs right off the cliff, and all you hear is, <laughs> Episode starts over, doesn't it? And he gets up and do the same daggone thing. So what is a linear thinker? A linear thinker is a person who is locked in to one belief to accomplish a particular goal. What is a linear thinker? A linear thinker is a person who sees an end to everything. And so what we got to do is we got to move from linear thinking to circular thinking, because otherwise, you'll be just like the coyote. You'll run off the cliff, your business will crash, your revenue will crash, and then at the end, the roadrunner will say two words. Does anybody know what those two words are? Meep? Yeah, stands for you idiot. Many of us are doing this with our business. We're running our business off the cliff. We're running our revenue off the cliff. We're running our, our clients off the cliff. 
So I want you to think circular. Why do I want you to think circular? Because the most profitable companies in the world think circular. Let me prove it to you. If you have an iPhone in this audience, just raise your hand. If you have an iPhone, raise your hand. Just look around. Look at all the iPhone users out there. Now, let me tell you how iPhone operates. They are not running a linear system. They are running a circular model. They are running an evergreen revenue model. Write that down. They are using an evergreen revenue model. Now, I was an Apple nut. I, I bought an Apple iPhone, and I stood in line for like three hours to get it, and I was so excited when I got it. And so after I bought the iPhone, eventually, I bought the iPad. Then I gave up my PC and bought a MacBook Pro. Then I attached this thing to my television called Apple TV. Then I came to the stage with an Apple Watch. I brought it just for you. And then after I spent all of that money, it was time to buy iPhone 2, iPad 2. MacBook Pro 2, Apple TV 2, buy the next Apple Watch. And afterwards, it's going to be time to buy what? iPhone 3. How many of you have purchased more than one version of the phone you currently have? Raise your hand and then look around. It's because you are operating within an ecosystem. And what's happening is that the linear thinker is thinking about the next customer. The circular thinking, circular thinker is thinking about the customer they already have because sometimes you don't need more clients and sometimes you don't need more customers. Sometimes you need more of the customers and more of the clients that you already have spending more money with you. Apple is one of the most profitable companies, the most valuable companies in the entire world and what they are running is an ecosystem. What they are running is an evergreen revenue model. But I didn't come here to talk about the evergreen revenue model for Apple. I came here to talk about your ecosystem. See, here's how we know that Apple was running an evergreen revenue model. When Steve Jobs went on vacation, the money was still coming in. Yes or yes? When Steve Jobs got sick, the money was still coming in. Yes or yes? When Steve Jobs passed away, the money was still coming in, yes or yes, because he was running an evergreen revenue model. But the question today is not about Steve Jobs' evergreen revenue model. The question today is not about Steve Jobs' evergreen revenue system. It's about your ecosystem. We got to get busy building our own ecosystem. And when we build our own ecosystems, we will be in place to really start to take back our communities. Here's the thing, is that the evergreen revenue model is based upon automation. It really is. Now when I say automation, don't get spooked, don't get scared. Sometimes when I say automation, people start thinking about robots working in the background. They start thinking about, uh, do I have to be a rocket scientist? We start thinking like the Jetsons, this boy Elroy, you know, it's not the Jetsons. We use automation every day in our lives. Automation is simply the process that we use to simplify our lives through the use of technology. By a show of hands, who's ever been to a Home Depot? Yeah, everybody. 10 years ago, if you went into a Home Depot, you saw a bunch of people walking around with orange aprons. Going to a Home Depot today, you see less orange aprons and you see a bunch of automated cash registers. You've seen this, yes or yes? And so what we gotta do is we gotta get busy using automation in our business. Whenever you think automation, I want you to think less labor, more money. Less labor, more revenue. Less of my labor, more revenue. Because you can automate your business and multiply your profits. You can automate your business and rescue your time. You can automate your business and take back your life. But you're going to have to start to embrace technology as a way of simplifying the way by which you bring revenue into your business. So I realize that many of us do not have an evergreen revenue model in place in our business today. So I created a gift for you. I created a blueprint that's going to allow you to automate your marketing, automate your business processes, automate your servicing, automate your technology, to automate the things that are going on in your business every day. Anything that you're doing in your business more than three times in one month can probably be automated if you know what to do. So here's what I want you to do. 
text the word black CEO, text the word black CEO to 240-428-6333. Text the word black CEO to 240-428-6333. And let's get busy building your evergreen revenue model. Let's get busy putting the automated processes in place in your business because it can do amazing things for you. Just the other day, I got a chance to take off work and take my son and his five boy cousins to go see Captain America in the Civil War movie. And it was great. And the thing is that automation allowed me to spend more time with those five black boys. And I'm gonna tell you, that's five black boys going to the movies. Five black boys all want popcorn. Five young black men that all want some Raisinets. Five black men that all want some Coca-Cola. Let me tell you something, you need an evergreen revenue model just to feed those black boys. <laughs> but in a day and era where we have so much to do, it is important that we get busy building our own ecosystem. So in closing, here's what I have to say. I was watching The Lion King the other day, and Mufasa and Simba are sitting there, and Mufasa looks out, and he says to his son, one day, all of this is gonna be yours. And I started thinking to myself, what did he mean by this? And immediately, the song plays, the circle of life. It's all a circle. What will you pass on? As entrepreneurs, we've been too focused on ROI, a return on investment. It's time for us to move into an ROF, a return on finish. Complete something to the point that it can go on without your on-site supervision. My name is Trevor Hotz. Have a great, wonderful, and spectacular day. Black CEO out.